Hi everyone I'm gonna share to you a brief facts and my memorable experience at Fuent Osmeña Circle. As we Filipinos love celebrating Christmas, with Cebu is one of the localities that celebrate the holiday most grandly. The heartwarming traditions that make Pasco Sa Sugbo a truly magical experience. The vibrant and exciting night I had at Fuent Osmeña Circle last Christmas was very memorable. My eyes are captivated by the festive lights and decorations. It is a wonderful feeling. As I roamed around, I enjoyed looking at the star-designed aisle. I even have some poses. And took pics. I was amazed by the tall beautiful Christmas tree and colorful lights. Aside from festive lights I also had fun watching nightly shows wherein local celebrities perform singing and dancing. The different local universities also partakes the said show. As I enjoy the surroundings. A lot of questions comes to my mind. Wondering about the history of Fuente Osmeña Circle. So I did some research. I found out that Fuente Osmeña Circle is a heritage site. It is named after President Sergio Osmeña, the fourth president of the Philippines and a native of Cebu. Fuente is Spanish for fountain, which also happens to be the park's central structure. The century-old fountain has stood since 1912, during the inauguration of the first waterway system in Cebu City. Located in the heart of uptown Cebu City, along Jones Avenue and General Maxalam Avenue, the park's iconic image is a favorite subject of many paintings created by local artists. I've also seen different figures of geometry. I saw some shapes in the fountain-like square. The lamp post is in pentagon shape while its base forms a trapezoid. The paths were nicely designed in parallelogram shape and an example of plain enough and the benches look so creative. Angular prisms forming its seat and chair backs. Point, right angle, lines and circles were seen at the fences. Another creative lamp post I saw was in diamond design. And, if we look at the aerial part. We can see a big circle forming its actual shape. Definitely geometry plays a vital role in the construction process itself. Like the Arc de Triomphe brings to mind William E. Carson's original plan for the development of Cebu beyond the old Spanish Quarter. In 1912, Carson's, the consulting architect at the then Bureau of Public Works, presented his master plan for the expansion of Cebu beyond what was then called the Cebu Burnt Area, a swath of land from Sanchonco and Colon down to M.C. Briones streets and the waterfront, sections of which had been burned during the 1898 revolution against Spain and then again about five years later. This area had remained decrepit, with streets so narrow that the American colonial administration decided to create a new section of the city, beyond Sanchonco. In his plan, Carson's designed six diagonal avenues leading to a central hub, in this case the Fuente Osmeña Rotunda, which he originally designated as the site of the new Cebu capital. Unfortunately, except for Osmeña Boulevard, Maxalam Avenue and B. Rodriguez Street, the two other broad avenues, supposedly radiating on the western side of the rotunda, were never realized. Parsons left in 1914 and probably never bothered to check whether his plans for Cebu ever saw the light of day. Beyond the dazzling displays and lively celebrations, it holds great cultural significance for the people of Cebu. They serve as a reminder of the island's historical and religious roots and allow locals and visitors alike to honor and preserve it. It's always great to know. I'm Azumi Zais and glad to share this to you. I hope you learned and enjoy my video. Thank you for watching.